All right, now we're gonna release it all game. Sorry, a little bit distracted today. I do apologize for that. All right, so you're not gonna feel bad about your reading. You're gonna feel bad about white. I, I'm not gonna make any like uh, any kind of attempts to like hide what's gonna happen in this game. Um, you're not gonna feel good for white throughout here. And this is good, because I like disparity of strength. If you've been to my lectures before, or if you know of my lectures, or heard of my lectures, or seen one of my lectures, or had a general feeling that sometimes I do lectures, then chances are you know that I like seeing a really strong player uh, just beat the bejesus out of someone that's not quite up to their level. And the reason for that is we can kind of see at a very, very basic level in those games, where the thought process is breaking down. And we can more easily relate that to our own games. Like, hey, I'd probably do this thing that White's doing. Oh, look at that, he lost half the board for it. That might not have been a great idea. So it's kind of easier to see our own mistakes reflected in some of those games, which is why I go over them. So to that end, White has given us a great one with Ysedol here that perhaps all of us can learn a little something from. Normal opening, we are going to go and take Orthodox from Ysedol. White has to decide how he's going to approach. Is he going to split at A, old school style? Is he going to approach at B, which is what we do nowadays? Could technically enclose, that'd be very, very unusual. We don't really see something quite that slow nowadays. We usually like see what our opponent's trying to do and ensure that they can't. That's something that we generally uh, prefer in our games. Instead, white decides to do none of these things and decides to grab a Chinese framework for himself. So that's interesting. You don't see that a lot. It's not, in, it's not entirely uncommon, but we don't usually expect to see it in our own games. So what do we do here? So many options. It's, it's actually kind of insane just how many different ways you can actually approach this. I mean, one thing that's completely fine for you to do is say, you didn't split me, I'm going to take my extension. Uh, Fraudwith points out, you can approach the top side. I, uh, Yep, yeah, you could do that, absolutely. I will point out that what you are doing greatly reflects your interests in this particular game. If you approach it B, what you are saying is, I'm going to let you develop your framework, I'm going to develop my framework, and we are going to have a nice peaceful framework versus framework game. Peaceful, he said all. Peaceful, he said all. Peaceful, he said all. Not really, it, it, there's something weird there. It doesn't feel right having those two sentences like together, or those two words in the same sentence, rather. So we're not going to see B, clearly. Uh, we could approach, try to force white into covering up his framework. And by that, I mean enclosing, because when they enclose, then it's not a framework anymore. It's no longer the Chinese. It's an enclosure that can never get an extension. Not the one they want, anyway. And so, you know, framework over. That's definitely a thing we can do. But Black decides that he will be peaceful. Imagine that. He decides to play 017, take another enclosure for himself. That is pretty peaceful. Maybe Isidol is becoming peaceful. Uh, someone in the chat asks, who is that picture of? I'm guessing they're referring to the one on the KGS board here. That's that, that's obviously me. I, I don't take random pictures and upload them to the intertubes. Uh, let's see, white must split now. Very true. If white does anything else but split and black gets a chance to take a move such as R10 for himself, then what we have is extensions from two enclosures. Extension from one enclosure, really, really good. From both enclosures, that's a little bit ridiculous. So yes, we are absolutely going to see that. Overconcentrated. 
I kind of I kind of like that. It's like, yeah, that, that's good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, quote, over-concentrate my opponent by giving them two enclosure, or two extensions from their enclosure. I like that one. Might not go well for you, but... Might make you feel better. White must decide how he's going to respond when black approaches. Because if black approaches this way, we can do a three space or a two space. If black approaches this way, we can also do a, th a two space. Could do a three space, but that would be a little bit weird because it leaves uh, something so obvious behind and there's no threat to go in the corner. So to have more than one answer here, we don't really see the three space extension, but we see the attachment instead. Black pushes, and as we just discussed, we have the option of a two-space extension. We have the option of the attachment. Don't really have this option because it's hard to figure out where we're going to gain strength from in order to actually attack the offending stone. All we can really do is connect up underneath and not be very happy ever again. Instead, we attach to the corner, but why do we attach to the corner? Why is this even an option? Does anyone know? Ooh, lots of interesting ideas that are all around the same thing. It's always interesting to ask like a question that's going to have a really obvious answer and see how people phrase it. Because Frogwith uh, says that he wants to borrow strength from the corner. Hiccups. Uh, simply as you see says because it's strong which is kind of the same thing he's attaching to it because it's strong but uh, there's other reasons there that he's not saying um sundays agree attached to strong stones disson's saying again b is already strong there essentially what they're getting at is if stone is already strong you can't really make it and you can't really make it much stronger by attaching to it that is the important part of that so our weak group can actually attach to a strong group because we can't really do anything against the strong group because it is already strong. I kind of like the borrow strength idea as a result of that. That kind of sums it up uh, quite nicely. It does depend on the response. It does depend on the response. Here, for example, uh, Black's response is to pincer. And now you have to know how to get strength from this particular uh, attachment that you've made. He's not going to simply say, okay, you attached me, I guess. I guess you're going to get strong now. It's like, no, if, you, if you're going to get strong here because of your attachment, you're going to prove it. So how do we follow up our lovely attachment in order to gain strength? Does anyone have any idea how to follow this up? Ooh, Hane underneath. An interesting idea. How about Q5? Uh-oh. R60. I do not want to envision a 60 by 60 board. R6. Oh dear. All right, uh, let's take a minute to highlight these. Okay, so we've had Hane under, uh, hit stone, uh, extend. Wait, key R8, what's R8? R8 is, is attached to stone, okay. So we have a lot of different ideas here. The correct one is to play the Hane here for reasons you'll see in a moment. Uh, let's look at the other ones real quick. If we attach here, for example, our opponent is going to get stronger immediately. So our attaching to the corner to get strength to attack uh, this lovely little R7 stone and hopefully settle has kind of gone really, really badly at this point because the stone that we're trying to, that is, you know, hurting us is getting stronger faster than we are. Uh, if we play here, uh... 
Mm. Eh. Mm. Arguable. This is a little bit of an issue. So we can connect underneath, so attachments can probably have the Hane. Because we can connect underneath, so uh, not not quite what we're looking for here. Um, this one, this one will actually get an immediate response because it doesn't really change anything, right? I mean, you're still disconnected. You didn't really get much strength. The corner is still okay, and we don't have a follow-up yet. We can play here, but it doesn't really work out so well. Um, D is just a little unusual. This is just saying, you know what, R5, I didn't really like that stone very much anyway, so I'm I'm gonna just kill it off and save my uh, three stones here. That's the goal. Whereas this is saying, you are not gonna let your stone get killed. You're gonna respond to me, you don't want me in your corner. This is obviously gonna be a forcing move. Great, forcing move. Now, the fact that R6 does exist is a really, really important point because it lets us use Aji at uh, R3. However, it is up to Black to be able to read that. So, all right, Black, time for you to read. Black Hane threatens kill on both sides. Black uh, Tari. White's going to connect because there's still uh, easy ways to handle this. We can still attack an Atari, or we can do R4, or 3 an Atari, sorry. So it's up to Black to decide which one Which one do you like more. Do you like your R7 stone? Do you like your R4 stone? What's it going to be? Black says, I like the corner. Oh! Let's see, you wanted R9, okay. Um, R9's a, hmm, R9 leaves that Atari behind. Would that really be superior to Solid Connection if we were going to do that? I think I like the connection better if we were uh, going to play something like that. I mean, the cut still exists, that's true, but the answer is still pretty easy to find, right? Basic. Black says corner, obviously white says Atari. And now this is a wonderful move that I see next. It, it, uh, it's kind of small. It, no, not small, it's a large move. Um, but order is important. Because as Desan, I think, said earlier, something about Aji, uh, create Aji. That is what he has done here. The fact that his stones are not off the board means there is Aji still in this location. But the problem with Aji is we kind of want to know how we're going to use the Aji. Right? We can take a position, we can milk it of everything it has, but if we end in Gote, then our opponent can just be like, well, I'm going to make sure that you're never able to use whatever you just did there. Right? So... We approach first because we know that we've got forcing moves here. I mean, we've got the Atari, uh, we've got a simple extension. We just, there's a really, really great chance here that we're going to get a wall. And if we get a wall, we want to use something with that wall. So we're going to approach, and if we get the chance to use the wall, then we're going to go back and do that. Which is why we see the following things. We see white back off. Black sets up the possibility for that wall, and White immediately says, you know what, no. I know what you're doing here. If I do anything else, either you're going to do something like this and get a wall this way, though I'm probably not. That's, I think that's disgusting. I, I prefer this. Or you're just going to play here, and you're going to get a wall that way, and now suddenly you've got a framework. You've got a wall spanning almost the entire board. I mean, we're just missing what? One more stone, and we actually have influence from top to bottom. So you know what? No, white says that's never going to happen. 
Not for you, no sir. Find something else to do. But that does mean we must find something else to do. So what should we do? What is something else we can do? Because this is clearly Sentai. We don't have to respond here. Keldragar says G4-ish. Okay, you're interested in extending along the bottom. Hikaru Pro says bottom as well. Frog with quickly sa says that White is quickly running out of sources of territory. That's actually a good. That's a pretty good point. Yeah, in terms of where he can develop territory from, he's got the corner. He's got a few points over here, which is pretty. Which is pretty good. Not gonna lie. Getting if he gets to kill those stones and it's, it's a few points. It's a few points. And then he might have something here. We're not really certain, but that's about it. Whereas we know Black has the bottom right. Uh, this is still open, but it's getting hard to play back in there because there's now three stones on that corner. Plus there's uh, potential on top for a quickly development. We can envision things like this and maybe even here. I think we approach at d5. When evaluating if you approach at d5, it's a question of how well your opponent can develop, um, in this case, the bottom side. Because the idea here is to get something like this, while your opponent is just trying to settle. Now, can't extend clear across the board, because, you know, Black's Corner is already there. Can't extend a little bit. But the corner is a large source of territory. So black approaches. We could try uh, something like this. Trying to develop again. But I don't think high here really works because I think white can invade anywhere because he's so strong on the right hand side. Right? So we're probably going to keep that low if we do it. But trouble with keeping it low is we don't really want to go low to low with low stones because that's, one, again, easy invasion, uh, and two, we don't like being flat like that, right? Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Um, could go low to high, but again, there's that easy response given the strength that white's got. So yeah, can see D I can see why uh, D5 is a more interesting one. A lot of the answers for black on the bottom are kind of sputtered out. Don't really like them quite so much. And oddly enough, apparently white doesn't like the idea of developing the bottom either. He attaches! He goes for territory! That's a little bit unusual. Usually we would see this, as I mentioned, this, this, uh, that, probably there, maybe one of them, something a bit like this, maybe one of those, maybe this if we're going to go and do the proper variation, and then extend over here. Sadly, that would give up Sente, though, and then maybe you'd lose your corner, or this one would be secured, or enlarged, while you're giving up Sente. Now granted, they might not play the Jiseki. I will go ahead and point out, since we're kind of talking about the Chinese, uh, there is this thing nowadays where the attachment here is quite often seen, rather than responding to it uh, passively, as we see in this variation. And the reason for that is you can kind of see that we're not going to be able to do much here. We can't really cut this off, right? I mean, we can, but it's going to last for like a move. So, a little bit of extra shape, and in this way it looks like it might even be Sente. 
I mean, does Black have to respond there? He's going to be fine regardless? Yeah, maybe. Either way, White says, I'm not going to play that. I'm taking my territory. So here's a question to you people. What do you do when your opponent does this? How do you get a good result here? I can think of two options. Which ones do you know? D4. Oh, yep, that is an option that I know. That I was referring to, rather. Uh, C6. I do like that one. F6. What is F6? F6, F6. F mm? Small knight. I've never actually seen that one before. Oh, you mean, okay, you mean the variation. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Not as in, you know, Black's move right now, but following up after this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this I would expect. And sometimes you could even play the way that, uh, who mentioned it? Yeah, as was mentioned, you can sometimes play this way as well, just to go and try to get that extra influence. Nope. I did not I did not mess up the tree. This is the correct variation. And the reason being here is you have interesting things at your disposal. You've got the potential to say, I'm gonna play move at A and surround your corner, unless you give me Sente right now. Or I'm gonna take my influence and I'm going to punch you in the face. This is where your large amount of territories come from, and I'm going to try to destroy it. White says, well, I'm going to connect underneath you because I'm going to get a lot of territory. And this is actually the beginning of the downfall for White. This is, this is interesting. We're going to see a lot of moves coming up here. I want to see which ones strike you as small. Because first we link up underneath and Black says, all right, I'm going to secure my territory, which is a huge point to have. Oh my god. I mean, is he going to get all of this for himself? Hope not, because that's enormous. B shape is light, that is true. Is K13 better for growing than K14? I don't know. Which are they? K13, ah... Uh, you could do K four or K thirteen because you've also got uh, the R twelve stone. I suppose. I suppose that works. I suppose that works. All right, White's turn. White decides to take stone, trying to hurt Black's shape. If black shape is hurt, then he has to worry about his shape. He's got to protect himself. If he has to protect himself, I guess maybe we can chase him. If we can chase him, we can probably profit. I can see the thought process here. Um, but I'm not sure if black is a player that actually knows fear. It's like, yes, you are... You are trying to destroy my shape, good sir. I will respond by taking your corner. So now we have a huge problem for white. It's like He's investing in this attack. The attack is being just flagrantly ignored. Which puts more pressure on white to prove his last moves weren't small. That white had to, re or that black had to respond here. That this was not uh, as uh, has been said is is not a small move. So okay, I'm gonna play through this. Got Sente here. Now we can look forward to deciding how 
in the future white is going to handle this. Because one more move here, uh, where would where would we even play? Would we play the cap right now? Would we go underneath? Would we go on top? It's hard to see just how these stones would be attacked. Would we extend all the way over here in the hopes that we can swallow all the things? White decides to limit Black's growth, taking one of the large points away from him. Because we've already seen, this is a very, very large point for Black. Or maybe even K13 could be a very, very large point for Black. So maybe Black connects here, maybe L17 or something. And then we can probably chase from above retreat from the L15 stone and have a large area because we can get this and maybe something like this in and then we can kind of picture in our heads that this area here might fall to uh, white so might be a cool idea uh, unfortunately even wait really did you do that you did do that unfortunately even the 6q can find black's next response that we're not going to simply defend passively we are going to be aggressive and try to attack first. For reasons uh, partially we mentioned already. Partially because we're aggressive and partially to make certain that the variation that we just peaked at doesn't actually ever occur. That you can't just retreat from here and grow the center up in a large scale. Uh, yeah, same thing, fraud with The fact that we are coming out rather than uh, dropping down and defending ensures that that's not going to get surrounded and thus helps send a group. Let's see. So we go deeper into the corner, or into the so uh, top side, because that's the other reason why we thought that white or the black had to respond to us. And now we get into this weird game of whose moves are larger. Because I would look at this and I'd be like, okay, uh, I don't know, maybe I kick here, maybe I push over there. Black, on the other hand, says maybe I attack here, because now you're kind of being put behind enemy lines. Didn't think that was going to occur, but it is happening. We can draw the line now. We have surround. We are surrounding this little group. Has to be careful. So there are technically two groups that are weak on the board right now. Okay, three. We can we can point out blacks as well. White says you should have responded to me. Black says no 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 no. You should be responding to me because I'm surrounding you. White says, that's fine. I'm going to isolate your stones. I can cut right through here. Then what are you going to do? You're going to have these stones in the middle that aren't doing anything. Black connects. The whole cutting off thing is obviously not going to happen anymore. So now we have a problem. A small one, but a problem. We need to settle our stones at D16. Hello. So how do we settle our stones at D16 now that we have allowed them to be completely surrounded? I feel like white... I feel like H17, sorry, hurt white in the corner. H17. Um, yeah. White is being rather surrounded in that corner. That is true. He must now decide how he's going to save himself. Maybe some F16, F18 stuff. Um, what? Oh, trying to attack. Mm, I don't think that can really work. I mean, even best scenario, you do manage to cut that off, right? 
But even if you cut it off, that stone's gonna then get killed and the corner's gonna be fine, so. <gasps> C12. Um, close, close. What sides actually play underneath? Which I find very interesting. Because it kind of seems a little bit small again to have to save yourself that way. And arguably now we're seeing a bunch of moves that we're not entirely certain about anymore. Like, are we really sure this was the time to play the Atari? Eh, I don't know. We have to connect them on the second line over here. That's not really the optimal solution that we were looking for. We went underneath. Uh, we're Okay, we're living, but not sure what we're really doing to black just yet. To be fair, if white is completely fine, then white does have a bit of territory. Where black only has two corners at the moment. So there is an upside to that. Black says I'm about to poke you. You must defend and live. And all those good things. So, okay. He does. Gonna go back and defend and live and all those good things. I heard they were important. So, there we go. Live by killing a stone. White needs to continue to get shape for himself. But he's not going to simply say, all right, well, I need to live here, so boop, I'm alive. Instead, he's actually trying to attack. He wants to cut off this middle group. Because if he simply says, boop, I'm alive, then now black has sente, so that's going to be really, really bad. With nothing to worry about, black take a large point. And who knows if white will ever get a chance to attack ever again in this game. So alright, we're attacking now. It must happen. So we cut through. Cuts nice and solid. Black stones in the center have been isolated. Secures his connection. Helps the stones, helps the stones. And now, what do we do with the black stones in the middle? Because this is obviously not Sensei, the corner is fine, black can ignore. How would you look to do anything with those black stones in the, in the middle? How do we use all of those things? What do we look for when we're trying to find something to do? What is it we are hunting for? We're looking for Aji. Okay. Why are we looking for Aji? Weak groups? Okay, but white doesn't have any. We already know that. I like F9. I like that you are close. I like that you're looking for F9. I can see what you're trying to do there. You're going to be like, I'm just going to connect all my things up. That's what I'm going to do. Pretty simple. Just connect all the things. But we want to do that in Sente, if possible. E9. Close, but we're trying to do that in Sente. Oh, who said it? Froddy Witherlings. Mr. Froddy Witherlings over here says that it is D9. Yes, attached to the stone because it is going to be Sente. So, cool idea, but this idea in Sente. We attach here, black says, no Aji, I'm going to take. Black says, okay, I'm going to Hane. White's fine. Black gets Sente, or not, sorry, black, uh, white gets Sente, sorry. I will never ever get those right. Eventually, around, you know, move 100, I start getting confused as to who is going at which turn. It just always happens. 
So yeah, White Eye Sentai. This, is, this should be a joyous moment. We can see exactly what Black is trying to do. There's no hiding it, right? I mean, he's getting up his stones, he's getting influence. He wants to do something there. The only trouble is, when we see that, so many of us just don't care about it. It's like, yeah, you're going for the, you're going for influence. All right, yeah, good luck with that one. You know how hard it is to get anything in the middle. You need to build four walls without me noticing. How are you ever going to do that? I'm just going to take a larger point elsewhere. And in this case, White tries to play a nice solid move by figuring that the walls are going to come from the moves that are already on the board. Moves are already on the board. P8. Or not, well, okay, that's a move, but I meant to say Q8. So I take that off the board. And it's going to be very hard for you to develop your walls. Uh, earlier, would a black move in the center be more valuable than E17? E17. Hmm. Hmm. I, I don't think so. Let's see, if we omit E17, then the top group is completely fine. And our stones are in a little bit of trouble because there's things like the Atari here and here and issues there. We need to like fix our shape. But if we fix it now, white can ignore us because completely fine. So the moves in the center are probably going to be played more by white than black, unless we save the cutting stones, forcing white to worry about himself. So we fix that. He keeps connection. We cut. We connect our uh, stones on up nicely. Again, removing the uh, Atari, forcing him to worry about his life. We grab the wall. Looks like there's no time to play. Move in the middle. So all right, white takes that, black grabs an extension, a very odd extension. Except it doesn't look like this stone is actually doing anything. I mean, are you extending from a low stone to a low stone across that huge of a gap when white's really strong in the area? Uh, I don't know about that. Are you trying to get in F3 maybe? Is that the goal? I can, okay, I can kind of see that one. Apparently white feels the same, it's like, you're never connecting this up as territory, I'm just going to invade because my group is right over there. And black says, well, I've got Miai then, I'm going to connect on up. It's like, well, that's not a forcing move, so I guess I'll just borrow strength off of you and reduce the center a bit, maybe. But that would have meant that black would play something like this, not that. Maybe this way, when there's no real reason to uh, play this way. Instead, black plays this way to settle immediately on the bottom. As we see here, nice large uh, base. We still have out. So black takes large point. Oddly enough, slowly but surely, he is actually developing the center. That is so that is so odd to see. We almost never see the center actually being taken this way. Yes, he avoided playing Tengen, thus justifying my hatred for it. I completely understand this move here. White is trying to... It's like White is trying to perfect his solid play. He's not trying to be rushed into anything. He's trying to see what his opponent's doing and just trying to find a nice, solid move to counter what his opponent is trying to do. It's like, all right, you're trying to develop here. I'm going to get strength from these three stones before I act. Okay, that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to threaten to make territory for myself while reducing you. 
That's good too, because if you defend the left, I can extend from here and I'm, I'm picking up points. We saw the middle is being taken, so like, okay, I'm going to take the one stone over here to kind of hinder those plans. Black attached here, so he got rid of the Aja that was in the area by taking the one stone over here. So he's trying to be really, really solid. It kind of does remind me of the old Yi Cheng Ho, a little bit. I want, mm, how to say this? Is there's there's no real polite way of saying this. Uh, it reminds me of the old. Mm, no, that's bad too. Oh, screw it. It reminds me of the old Li Cheng Ho, just without the strength. Now that sounds mildly insulting, but that's how it looks to me. So all right, black says, "Can I cut through?" White says, "Nope." Can I kill your stone? No, you cannot. Good, then in that case, I'm just taking a few more points for myself. Fun! Rather get into a defensive move where we're trying to just hold off on the center and surround and make points there. Black says, okay, I'm gonna reduce you. No points here for you. White turns around and tries to apply pressure to black. Says, all right, what about your uh, group over here? If you don't defend it, I can, you know, poke out your base, force you to run away. Black ignores, because really we've been pretty much ignoring almost all of white's, not all of white's moves, but a lot of white's moves at this point. So like, nah, that one's going to be too slow, too. I'm just going to keep making my little uh, area in the middle one move at a time. Quite, quite literally, actually. I mean, that wasn't really sente, and... A lot of these moves weren't really sente. It's kind of interesting, really, that that's not sente. I want to say maybe that one wasn't either. I forget. Anywho. White follows up. Because, you know, our move had our move is important. It has value. Black fixes almost immediately. White fixes himself. Because now it looks like he's being isolated. Just gonna keep applying. I'm not even sure if we're applying pressure now or we're just like sealing off white from the area that we kind of grew. White turns. Sure, why not? We got the attachment at uh, 06 as a follow up, I guess. That's a little bit of a reduction there. Makes certain that black can't keep developing this area. That's something as well. Black stands on in, because why wouldn't you? White defends himself, saving his stones, threatening connection up underneath. Gets about as much reaction out of black as most of white's moves so far. It's like, alright, I'm just gonna poke through and see if I can't cut off your stones then. So, I mean, this, is, this does have value, I mean... Yeah, that's that's pretty large, and this is not immortal yet. So, okay, poking through. We we have to respond. So white responds and responds. Blocks connection. White dares to come in. And now it's White's turn to finally do something amazing. He's going to try and use the corner Aji to his benefit. White blocks, or black blocks this way, which means the only Aji that White should have right here is in the sacrifice with us 15. And 
Ugh, I feel really bad whenever I see these moves. Because this... Probes in general, I feel really, really bad for. Not the game itself, but I feel really, really bad whenever I see a probe. Because it's, it's always like that friend. And everyone almost always knows like what you're talking about when you say that friend. It's like, as long as you are... Uh, as long as they are doing whatever activity they're doing, which they met you at, then they're your best friend. But the minute they decide that they don't want to do that activity anymore, they'll never speak to you ever again until they feel like doing that activity again, in which case, hey, remember me? Yeah, I, 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 I'm here again. And that's kind of how probes are, because right now we're totally interested in this corner and what this probe can tell us. Like, hey, dude, what's going on here? Like, what Aji do I have? Oh, not much? Okay, um, I'm never speaking to you for the rest of the game. So, good luck with that. Enjoy the corner. I'll see you never. So that's why I usually feel bad for probes. Because we have our answer, and now that we have our answer, we may never acknowledge this thing's existence ever again, as long as we live. So yeah, that, that's why you should feel bad for probes. They have a really, really rough life. Thankfully, Lee Siddle is a very, very honorable, or not Lee Siddle, sorry, uh, the opposite of Lee Siddle, White, is very, very honorable in this game, and he's going to try to make R17 worthwhile. He's not giving up on a friend. No way. He, he's sticking through this. So, okay, Lee Siddle is off to kill him, which is extremely sad, because the Provard is a rough life, and now he's actively trying to murder him. White tries to save his buddy, doesn't quite work. Complete Atari, there's nowhere to run. Our sad little friend is gonna die now. But maybe we can maybe we can sa save the rest of ourselves? I mean, it's a shame that he's dead, but maybe we can get away with this. E except that Nisidol's gonna try to kill us here as well, which is a bit of a bummer. And not even that, though. You can see what's going on with every move, right? Black's going to come up again, the minute white extends, and we're kind of giving a few more points in the middle to black as a result, with our every stone. I mean, we can picture another follow-up move here or wherever, and this is kind of going to turn into a few points. Um, white tries to sacrifice. Okay, sure, got a take. Good Atari. All right, that works too. Making it really, really difficult for White to find that life he's looking for. Seems that we may have found it in Ko, which means I would immediately have lost this game, as I'm sure we all know. Black extends through, because the attachment at here is not good. So this is a forcing move. White's got to live. Good co-threat. White attempts to push through. That's a problem because then our stones are dead, so gotta respond to that one too. Black backs off, interestingly enough. White cuts, forcing Black to defend himself. This is getting really awkward, because it looks like we've got to go multiple steps for this code if we're going to try to live. We have to get S19 for ourselves, and then we have to win the co again. So, looks like it's a, looks like it's a bit of a problem there. Co is not over with. White saves stones. Black saves stones. Try to live in corner, and back to co. Okay. That seems like it's a threat. Not quite the threat that, uh, not quite the response that we were probably expecting, though. 
white has to save, black defends, and now that awkward moment where you suspect that you have to respond again. It's like, what about the push and the cut? Is, is that a problem? Hard to say. Gonna go back to this. Black says, get out of my game. I'm gonna kill you here now. White made the decision to live! Because that that's a poor decision. It's like, alright, this is gonna net way too many uh, cover threats. Even if I can salvage again, or not salvage, uh, struggle against this. So what we're gonna do instead. End the co and see what's what. And what's what is black just kind of took everything in the middle. R17 was technically brought back to life. Unfortunately, the original stone that was played there did in fact get killed. Whoa, that's actually pretty loud. It's my one second. Uh, I think it's closed. I would not be surprised if those on Twitch can actually hear that. Sorry if you can. Um, let's see. Where was I? Oh yeah, here. White has to respond, otherwise he's going to be cut to pieces. Black is being really, really cruel and trying to cut off White completely and kill him somewhere else. Gonna respond and try to hold on to all the things. Oh my god, one moment. You now know what it sounds like when it rains over here. Twitch is having issues? Oh shoot. Am I still streaming? Yeah, no drop. Oh my god, you're right. Twitch is having issues. I have 10% drop frames. Ah, sorry about that. Sorry about that. That is my fault. Bandwidth problems, perhaps. Don't know. I will upload this later. I'll have to investigate why that happened. Alright, uh, let's see. Where was this? Oh yes, trying to murder. Ah, I, rem ah, I remember now. So we try to cut that off. This is nicely defended. This is nicely defended. And now we have to live over here as well. Okay, gonna prevent that one from occurring. Get Atari here, that should probably take care of things. Black cuts off. White threatens to make a connection here, so black saves. White makes the eye. Yeah, it is raining rather hard. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> but I'm sure it's fine. I'm not getting any notifications for like tornado warnings or anything like that, so it's probably okay. Uh, so yeah, black drops down. Now the wonderful question, can we live? Can we live here? Is this possible to live, or is this dead? Lee, lives, Lee wins no matter what. It's a lie. You ask the question, he resigns. <laughs> After N1, how to make eyes. Looks dead. Well, white starts, as white always starts, with a throw in. Just promptly ignored. 
So the question is, could we have lived any other way? If we played here, that's still not going to work out, right? Well, let's see if there's a way to live in this way. Um, all right, maybe there is, maybe there is. White starts with a probe, which is responded to immediately. I'm gonna try to attach. Okay, that's a that's a shape point. White uh, saves there too. We can cut, forcing black to take. And um, I don't know where this is going. There's problems in the corner. Can't really poke through. Only Aji there is trying to make something happen, so we're going to kill that off as well. Plays the Atari. The black just extends. So we resign. Nothing else to do. We're dead on the bottom. The middle is insanely large. And white's got corners. White's got a top that's not worth anything. Corner, that was, that was pretty reasonable. That was pretty reasonable. But this isn't worth anything. This isn't really worth anything anymore. All we really have is that lower left hand uh, corner available to us. Definitely can't really compete with everything on the board. So yeah, white resigns. Way too much, way too much. And it's so strange how this happened. I mean, I can see that the style white's going for, and I agree with it, I like it. He's trying to play nice and solid. Saw what black was doing, and it was trying to just eliminate the Aji the most efficient way possible. But it was just a little bit too slow. Just a little bit too slow. And a lot of people will play slow moves. A lot of people will get rid of Sente when they shouldn't. Or will not will get rid of Sente. Will um, lose Sente, rather, when they shouldn't by thinking they need to respond somewhere. And those sorts of things kind of wind up in games like this where suddenly your opponent, maybe they do have a large center, despite the fact that you saw it coming. Or maybe you didn't, they had Sente and they built it. That's entirely possible. But all right. Uh, thanks everyone for stopping by. I hope you really, really enjoyed this game. Those of you who are watching on Twitch, I'm sorry that I was, I, I guess I was lagging or maybe Twitch was lagging. There, there was a problem between me and Twitch, obviously. So uh, 10,712 drop frames did in fact occur. But I will be uploading that within a couple of days onto my YouTubes. So you'll be able to catch whatever you missed. Again, sorry about that. I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.